Apocalypse hit, I'll ride with you for sure. If Apocalypse hit, your type who's smile inside an abyss, an easy going soldier in a Okay, so let's start the video off with this. Um, I bought the X1D2, the beginning of this year and I've been shooting with it for about nine months right now, and I've been loving the experience. I always wondered what it would be like to shoot on a medium format uh, digital camera. And um, let's just say that it's really changed how I take photos right now. And addressing the elephant in the room, so the X2D uh, was announced a few days ago, along with a few amazing looking lenses. And if you're watching this, you're probably wondering, wait, uh, should I get the X1D2 instead? Um, and so if you've been wondering that, then this video is definitely for you. I will also be showing lots of images I took with the X1D2, so stay tuned for that. Um, I generally don't do too much tweaking on my images. I use Focus, which is the software that Hasselblad gives you. No funky presets or anything, so I think uh, you can get a pretty good grasp of what the images look like out of these cameras. And another note before we get into the video, uh, the X1D is also available, but that um, actually it's a bit old and also uh, the X1D2 is an upgrade to that camera uh, with a lot of um, kind of upgrades to the flaws that the original X1D had. So in this video, I'll mainly be covering my experience with X1D2 and I will personally be pretty careful if you're planning on getting an X1D. So first let's talk about finances because let's be real here. We're gonna be talking about a serious investment. You know, this is, at the level of I can start a business kind of money or I can throw money at random people on the streets and gain YouTube clout kind of money here, right? The X2D's uh, starting price is $8,200 retail and but you know, with the XCD lenses so expensive, you're gonna be spending much, much more money than that. The X1D2, on the other hand, although the price hasn't gone down yet, you're looking at $5,700 retail and about $4,200 re uh, used, sorry, uh, for a good condition body. So that's approximately half the price you're gonna be uh, spending when you're getting an X1D2 used in good condition compared to the X. 2D uh, in 2022. For the XCD lenses, uh, there's one pancake lens that you can get for $1,000, but don't get fooled. Whatever lens you wanna buy, high chance that you're gonna be spending over $2,500 up to $5,000. So make sure to do your research and understand what lens you're gonna buy because that's a big chunk of money too. If you're planning on getting the legendary 80 mil F1.9, then again, you're thinking of spending about $5,000. So you really need to consider that in your budget. If you're combining that with an X2D, well, I honestly wish you the best. Next, I wanna do a quick comparison with the X1D2 and the X2D. Again, a quick note, I've never used X2D yet, uh, sadly, but I have uh, experience with X1D2, so I'll be talking about my experience using this camera. I have to admit that the X2D does improve a lot of the points that do kind of make the X1D2 slightly frustrating to you sometimes. And I wanted to go through how good these improvements uh, can be. I think the first point uh, is the biggest actually, and I want to talk about the autofocus. The autofocus on the X2D improves on X1D2 by a big margin. And I think I talked about this in the video uh, quite from a while back. Um, I mentioned that once the autofocus starts improving on these bigger, uh, larger format cameras on digital, then that's when uh, things really change. And I think that they did a really good job on it looking, you know, I mean, I'm just looking at the footage from a few YouTubers that are using the X2D, but it seems much better than X1D2. So this is, I think, the biggest buying point for the X2D. Um, and if you're a type of person that wants to take quick candid shots or you want to take portraits that are more kind of in action, then I highly recommend getting the X2D, not the X1D2. But if you're the type of person like me that kind of accepts the fact that um, getting a medium format digital camera means that you're gonna slow things down, then maybe you're even uh, good um, just by getting the X1D2 instead. So next I wanted to talk about image quality because the X2D has an amazing, astonishing 100 megapixels, which is, uh, you know, compared to the measly 50 megapixels of the X1D2, um, you know, which is, you know, it's a good deal. It's a, it's a great deal, perhaps. Uh, but I don't know, for personal opinion, I think 100 megapixels, it's, it's kind of too much sometimes. The files get really, really massive. So unless, you know, you really want to get 
a lot out of those files. Like if you're shooting like gigantic landscape shots, then maybe perhaps you can benefit from it. But other than that, I think image quality speaks in in kind of kind of other languages. On that note, um, the X Studio has a 16-bit color depth. If I'm not if I'm not wrong, uh, which is a lot, and it's amazing. But actually, the X1D2 has the same uh, bit depth of 16-bit. Um, so, uh, if you're into that, uh, whichever camera is fine. In terms of dynamic range, the X2D has uh, 15 stops of dynamic range. The X1D2 has uh, 14. So, the difference is neg negligible, I think, honestly. Um, I don't think that would make much of a difference. But let's see uh, how the image quality uh, changes by looking at you know people that are shooting with X2D and their images. The next point is also a pretty big one. I want to talk about IBIS. The X1D2 does not have IBIS. The X2D has five stops of seven axis stabilization. Five axis, seven stop IBIS. I, I don't know this stuff, but it's a lot of IBIS. So um, from my experience with X1D2, See, I have really, really steady hands, but even even so, I, if I shoot under or slower than uh, 1 50th of a second, I can get some blur. Um, but looking at um, YouTubers' uh, footage using the X2D, apparently you can shoot uh, at around 1 tenth of a second, which is, mm, that's a pretty good deal because, and this is pretty important because with medium format cameras, they tend to be a bit uh, heavy and bulky. So IBIS helps a lot. There's another thing that the X2D has uh, going on is that it has internal memory and apparently it has one terabyte of internal memory, which sounds quite amazing actually. I really love that feature. Um, I think we're at this point where there are so many great hybrid cam cameras, hybrid as in uh, photo and video, um, but now companies are trying to make a stronger differentiation between what a good photography camera is and what a good video camera is. Uh, the Leica M11, I think, has internal memory, um, and right now the Hasselblad X2D has one terabyte of internal storage, which is amazing. The less stuff you need or the less gear you need in order to make these cameras work, the better, the simpler it is. Uh, less SDs sounds like an amazing deal to me because I always have a bunch of SD cards lying around on my desk after I put them in my computer, um, and not having that sounds amazing. The X2D also allows you to go to ISO 64 with X1D2. Uh, the minimum ISO is 100. And this might not sound like much, but I think it's a really good change because uh, these cameras actually f um, use a leaf shutter. And what that means is if you're using the leaf shutter on these cameras, the fastest um, shutter speed actually is 1 2,000th of a second. What happens when you go, um, when it hits that uh, that maximum is it, you actually can't take the photo. So let's say you're shooting on a really bright day and then the camera suddenly says uh, you're, you've reached one two thousandth of a second and then you try to click the shutter, it actually doesn't fire. So um, if you have ISO 64, you're able to shoot with a lower f-stop and in brighter circumstances, which is amazing. There are a few other things that the X2D improves upon the X1D2. Come to think of it, that's actually a lot of improvements and that's actually pretty cool. But um, one other thing that we can talk about is, oh yeah, the finder. So they improved the finder, which is always great. I think this is also like a good direction for the photography cameras too. I think there's a reason that um, great film directors today still use big optical finders, right? The bigger uh, the viewfinder is and the brighter it is, I think the better it is for photographers in general. Oh yeah, and I think one more thing, the X1D2 and the X1D, when it focuses, it's kind of, it sounds really clunky. It makes this really weird beeping sound. <laughs> Um, apparently they improved that a lot with the X2D, so I think that's a good thing because I've had experiences where I'm shooting for a client and then <laughs> this camera <laughs> doesn't focus well and keeps on like beeping and the client is like, what the fuck is up with that camera, right? Or that photographer. So that was a good thing, definitely. Uh, quickly, some features that I love about the X1D2 personally. Um, I love the design of this camera. Obviously getting the X2D, the design language itself is pretty similar, so we can get either one. The build quality is amazing. Um, and I think that's one of the main differentiators between this and the Fujis. Um, the Fujis, you know, the GFX 100s and the S's and I, sorry, there's too many and I forgot the names, honestly. But um, yeah, they, they have similar functionalities. 
Um, but when you want something with a good build, then you're definitely going to be getting this camera. Next, uh, the image quality out of the Hasselblad X-Series cameras. Um, they're just fantastic all around. Uh, I love the color rendition too specifically. Maybe that's, that also has something to do um, with using Focus and not Adobe software. Um, so, but yeah, in, in whatever situation, I recommend using the Focus software first before you start using uh, Lightroom for these uh, images. Another thing I love about the uh, X-Series cameras is definitely the accessories. Uh, it does feel like a complete system. Uh, the batteries are amazing. There's a battery charging port where you can charge two batteries, and I love the UI on that. Uh, there's also like a remote trigger and there are just like many things that um, you can buy along with the camera and it's designed to fit uh, the design aesthetic of the camera too which i definitely love okay so to wrap things up uh, which camera should you get the most simple answer and i'm sorry again if this is kind of such a plain answer but if you want the improved autofocus on the x2d then that's kind of the only option you got i think um, but again uh, keep in mind that if you get the X2D, you have less money to spend on lenses. The lenses will be quite expensive, so just be careful there. There are also some smaller improvements that I talked about in this video. Um, and if those things are deal breakers to you, then uh, get the X2D. For example, the ISO, uh, improved uh, monitor, improved viewfinder, IBIS, things like that. But in the end, uh, if you agree with me, and you're kind of in the same boat as me, as in um, if you think getting a medium format camera means that you're able to slow things down, then I think the X1D2 is enough for you. Okay, I should wrap things up here. Things are getting quite chaotic. There's a dog shitting right next to me. There are chicotas everywhere. And so I'm just gonna wrap it up here. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know if you want me to do a video talking about medium format digital cameras in general or a little bit more of breaking down uh, this camera and my experience using it. Uh, thank you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Okay. I have to admit that the X2D <laughs> X2D 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 X2D's nuts. <laughs> I have to admit that the X2 <laughs> I have to admit that the X2D does improve a lot of the points that the X1D2 is... I don't know, that it makes... Uh, fuck. What was I gonna say? <laughs> it, that does make the... Oh no, the... Oh, the script is wrong. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it's not my fault, even though I'm the one that wrote the script. The script is wrong, it's not my fault. Okay. That's so fucking crazy. You know, like,